So this particular module has a very cool, many cool relationships. One is the angles inside of any triangle. So in other words, how much would this, this, and this angle, all three of those, what would those all add up to uh, in terms of a total degree value? Now a very cool thing is, is if you take that angle A, so there it is right there, if you take that triangle, any triangle, and you take B and you rip it off and you stick it right beside A, and if you take C and you rip that thing right off and you stick it right beside A, do you see what happens? It creates a perfect line. Now you and I know that a line, in terms of degrees, is a total of 180 degrees. So informally, we're learning that the three angles of a triangle come out to be 180 degrees. Now, we probably need to be a little more exacting than that, but that's a great start. Now, we might have to be a little more exacting than that, but let's see if we can do kind of a more formal style proof in this case here to do the same thing. So let's start with uh, our given is just any old triangle. There it is up in the upper left corner we're going to try and prove that the three angles inside do add up to 180. We're going to pull a nice little trick here and that trick is going to be just we're going to add a parallel line to one of the sides. So at the beginning we say we have a set of parallel lines. The next thing we can say is that because of that line there 4, 2, and 5 all add up to 180 because that is exactly a straight angle. Straight angle is 180. We're ready and set up now. So we have a parallel set of lines. We know that these three angles add to 180. This is actually pretty close to what we want to know, isn't it? Look, uh, we want 1, 2, and 3 adding to 180. And right now we have 4, 2, and 5 adding to 180. Let's see if we can make this work. Let's zoom in a little bit on this one triangle here. There he is. Now, let's start building a bit of a proof here. You and I know if we have parallel lines, which we have, this would be a transversal right here. What that would mean is 4 and 1 must be the same. So we can write that in. The alternate interior angles must be the same. By the way, guess what? Good news. There's a transversal going this way, and because of that, these two angles are also alternate interior angles. Do you see the argument uh, that we're building here? Look, we said that these three guys are 180 degrees. We said that 4 and 1 are identical, because alternate interior, and 3 and 5 are identical. So. If we do a little substitution where we plug in these guys into this, we would find out that 1, which used to be 4, and 2, and 3, which used to be 5, all equal 180. And basically what we did to do that is by a substitution. So we have proven, using a nice little technique, that yes, indeed, the three angles of a triangle do add up to 180. This proof is often uh, used or specifically referenced, so it's a good one to memorize or to know. Let's look at a couple now and apply it. So here is a triangle, and I know that this is 112. I know this is 24. That comes to 136. So ultimately I say what's left of the 180 and so our answer would be 44 degrees or x equals 44 in this corner. Let's try something that looks a little different um, and I'm working in this problem. First I'm working over here. I notice these uh, and I'm missing one x here and so if I add these two together uh, and then subtract that from 180 I believe I'm left with 52 here. Now what's kind of cool is I'm using my vertical angle information to know that this would also be 52 and now I am in the game that I can do. I would take 180, subtract 76, subtract 52 
And actually, in this case, kind of a weird case, that actually left us with 52. That's not always the case, but just that's how it worked out. This looks fun. Let's try this one. Now, the first thing I notice here is these parallel lines. They gave us parallel lines because that's going to help us with any parallel line relationship. Hmm. Uh, where to start? Let's start um, right here with Y. I notice 60 here, uh, 78 here. So when I subtract all of that, I get 42 as this value. This is where I notice that the parallel lines can help me out. Here's the transversal to this parallel line and this parallel line. So that means this 42 will equal this angle down here, also 42. Now, how does that help me out? Can you see the triangle that has uh, x, 113, and 42? So there's a triangle. They all have to add up to 180. So with a little subtraction in there, I think I find out that x is 25. Now, how do we get all the way down to z? Let me take a little bit of this away. No, let's leave it all up. Let's highlight the entire triangle. Pay attention to the big triangle here. And there are three angles in the really big one. There is 78. Yes, you would agree. Now in the other corner, it is this angle right here, which happens to be two angles, the 25 and the 42, for a 67 degree angle there. And the last angle is down here. So we would take 180, take out the 78, take out the 67, and your remaining angle would be this little guy, 35 degrees. There's other ways to get there, but that's certainly one of the ways to get there. Another important relationship about triangles is about the isosceles triangle. And earlier in the year we've talked about this guy, but an isosceles is one that has at least two congruent sides. And the sides that are congruent have a specific name. They're called the legs. So this is a leg and this is a leg. The other side is known as a base. So this guy would be the base. Now early in the year we, we actually looked at the symmetry of this shape and said it had one line of symmetry and what's cool is because of that line of symmetry there are many things that we know about it. For instance we would know that this would map onto this by that reflection. This angle here would map onto this angle here by that reflection. This little guy here would map onto this little guy here. That this base angle, this is called a base angle, would match this base angle. So we know, and this is actually really the essence of what I'm trying to remind us, it would, re it would help us to know that the base angles, that the base angles of an isosceles are congruent or equal. And the reason that happens is because of that beautiful line of symmetry that reflects one onto the other. Once you know that, we can do lots of cool triangle problems. All right, here is an isosceles. I recognize it because there are these two equal sides. I just mentioned that when we have an isosceles, we do know that it always has a line of symmetry that divides it, which would map base angles onto each other. The base angles are on that base side, right? These are the two congruent legs, and so these would both be 78s, and that leaves us uh, the value of 24 for this guy up here. So key knowledge there is we needed to know base angles would be equal in that problem to get to x. All right, let's try another one. Up it comes. I notice the same kind of relationship, a little bit different arrangement. This time I know what's called, I call, it's called the vertex angle. 
um, and it wants one of the base angles. So you know what to do. We would take 180, take out the 98. That leaves us with 82. Now that 82 represents what's left, but we know that that angle and this angle must be the same because they're base angles of an isosceles. So this is a 41 in this corner and this would also be a 41 in this corner. One last one of this type uh, dealing with it. Uh, I like this problem right here. Lots going on. So let's start with an angle they know. They gave us this uh, vert vertex angle here. I do notice I'm in an isosceles. So I would take 180 and subtract the 36. That leaves me with 144. When I divide that by 2, I get 72 and 72. In here, this happens to be uh, a linear pair, and so I can just subtract 72 from 180, and guess what? I get 108 as my value. Now I'm in a brand new isosceles. I notice that this, uh, that the the sides happen to be this one and this one happen to be equal. Therefore, let's take 180, subtract out the 108. That will leave me with 72. Divide that by two, and I get base angles of 36 and of 36. I don't think that this angle had to be the same as this. That just happened to be kind of a random item. But just kind of, I wanted you to follow through the logic of how I did that. I used this vert vertex angle to get two equal base angles. I used this to get my linear pair partner here. And then I'm in a brand new isosceles that had base angles that were equal. Let's look at one last angle relationship in the triangle. The last relationship we'll look at is called an external angle. That's this guy out here. An external angle is formed by just extending one of the sides uh, beyond the triangle. And an external angle will always be formed. There's a couple new terms. When you have an external angle, we have something called the near interior. And because we have an external angle, we have somebody called remote angles, and those are the ones in the back. Now what we're going to try to prove here is that these two back angles are exactly the same size as this one. Now this isn't actually very complex to show. Let me show you why. I know that these two angles come out to 180 together. But I also know these three angles come out to 180 together. So doesn't it make sense that both groups are using angle 1 as a partner to make 180? So therefore, they have to be the same. Let me give you an example. Let's make angle 1 an actual number. Let's say it is uh, 30, let's say. That would make this guy 150, wouldn't it? Because they're a linear pair together. But wouldn't it make these two also 150? Because if you have 30 in this corner, then these two corners must add up to 150. 150 and 150. This is kind of a basic way of describing that relationship. This is basically that proof in a formal way. So let's show you what I mean. All three angles in a triangle add up to 180 because they sum to 180. Next, the two exterior angles, these two guys here, they are a linear pair and their supplements add to 180. Both groups added to 180. Would you agree to that? Yes, you would. That's equal to 180, that's equal to 180. So they must be equal to each other. So in the next statement I say, okay, the one guy is equal to the other guy, and I substituted them together. Finally, you'll notice something cool happens. Some of these guys get repeated. This angle is equal to that one. So if we were to subtract it off, all that's left is what's called the exterior angle theorem, which says the exterior angle, this guy out here, that's this, is equal to the sum of the two remote angles. Th this angle here 
will always be equal to the sum of those two there. Likewise, you could see kind of that idea. Here's angle C, here's angle C. If we ripped off this guy and tuck it into this spot, and if we ripped off this guy and tucked it into that spot, again, we can see that same relationship. Let's look at two examples and call it good. In this one, we can use the fact that we know this angle will equal this one and angle B together. So if I just say 65 minus 21, I get angle B in a nice way. That's just, uh, angle B will be 44. To get BCA, that's an easy one to get because these two add to 180. So it's 180 minus 65 is 115. Also not bad. Similarly, I know that this is the exterior angle. It would equal this one and this one. So if I took 160 and I subtracted 42, I would get my angle A at 118 degrees. If I wanted to know angle C, these two together equal 180, and so it would be 20. Those are three critical angle relationships in triangles.